people of Kenya are fighting in the streets. They're fighting for their rights. They're out and about. Congratulations, Kenyans. Okay, look at that. These people are fighting very hard for something that they deserve. When you see people walk like this in the street, screaming, jumping, breaking things, they're clearly fighting for something important. Yeah, so it's been happening in Kenya for the past couple of days. People are out in the streets fighting against tax. So Kenyans have found themselves in a situation where they have to pay extra tax for many basic things. So fellas, Kenyans are fighting for one thing very simple. They've been subjected to excessive taxes. There's a brand new bill in parliament that's been proposed to be voted as law. This bill will elevate tax that people will not be able to bear. Honorable members, the results of the division on second reading of the finance bill 2024 is as follows. Eyes 204. Nays 115, abstentions nil, so the eyes have it. Order, take your seats. There's a tax on bread. So from now on, if you want to buy bread, you must put more money for tax. There's tax on cancer treatment. Imagine a person that's very sick, that needs treatment, but then they need to pay tax on the treatment. There's tax on cooking oil, tax on diapers. So no more babies, don't make babies because you're going to pay tax for it. Digital tax. Digital tax is a tax for you to get on the internet. Before you get on the internet, you have to pay digital tax. Crazy stuff. There's tax on M-Pesa. M-Pesa is a system that allows you to send money from a mobile phone to another person in a village without going through the bank. So you can just send them money. They will see the codes in the mobile phone and go to an agent and get the money. So now, from now on, if you want to send some money to your cousin in the village or your grandmother, and $100, now you have to pay tax to the government for sending $100 to your mom or your grandmother. Crazy, isn't it? What did the government do for you for you to have to pay that tax? Crazy stuff. Tax on motor vehicle. So if you own a car, you need to pay tax for owning a car. Tax on solar. So you can have electricity on solar system, but you have to pay tax for it. There's tax on pad. Yeah? Tax on pad. Female pad. Yeah, you got me right. That's pads that women need to use for you know what i mean that's crazy so the kenyan people have come down the street to ask for equality this is unacceptable nationwide demonstration have erupted in kenya over controversial tax bill the financial bill 2024 initially presented to parliament in may as sparkled discontentment with the increase in an array of taxes and levies for Kenyans. The mass protests initially organized in the capital city, Nairobi, have spread across the country. Demonstrations have taken place in almost every single city. So fellas, let's understand this. William Ruto is this man. He's the president of Kenya. Good man. Good looking. Very kind. Apparently. Okay. Uh, William Ruto has done some good things. I mean, yeah. Let's, let's go through it. The reason why you have tax today it's because Mr. Ruto believes that the country is indebted. So he's trying to find ways to sort of bring the country up to pay the debt uh, from the borrowers and be less dependent on international institutions like World Bank and IMF. You know, most of the time when World Bank gives you money, they want to dictate your local policies. They want to dictate your local politics and what your choices are. Sometimes they say before they give you money, you have to allow men to lack other men. You know what I mean? So William Ruto feels like the country is too dependent on these institutions. And one of the best ways to avoid them at all is to get the people to contribute more into a basket that will help the people grow. So theoretically, it sounds great. We're going to get the people in the country to pay more money, you know, so that we don't have to borrow money from anybody else from outside. So we can resolve our own issues without having anybody to interfere with our own choices. Because usually when somebody borrows you and gives you, especially these institutions... They want to dictate how you proceed. If you want to build a school, they're going to tell you which company to use to build the school. You want to build roads or hospitals. They want to tell you who to cooperate with. Now, so Ruto feels like the country is too indebted. Kenya's external debt reached $39.2 billion in 2024. One of the main goals established by William Ruto is to try to bring this debt down. So th theoretically, it sounds really good. Okay, bringing money together so that you can get things going, uh, tax on things. But practically, it's very complicated because when you tax bread to somebody who barely earn any money from any jobs, 
it becomes very difficult because before you get money from me, you need to create jobs where I can get salary from. There aren't necessarily jobs for everybody in Kenya. And people who have jobs, especially uh, government jobs or state jobs, are not very happy with their salaries and the conditions. Let me just remind you a while back, Kenyan doctors that worked in government hospital were marching in the street of Nairobi a few months ago. Why? Because of the salary. They were not happy with the salary, not very happy with the treatment. They wanted more opportunities. They also wanted an insurance for their families, meaning if my wife or my child is sick, they can come to the hospital and get treated. After all, am I not a doctor? I'm providing a service for the state. But William Ruto couldn't respond to that. His response to them was, and I am telling uh, our friends, the doctors, that we mind about them, we value their, their service they give to our nation, but we must live within our means. The resources we have are only sufficient to pay 70,000 shillings for intern uh, doctors. It is not a salary, it is a stipend for only one year, and then they will be employed. And we want all our doctors, all our doctor interns, to be taken in, and that is why we are going to spend the resources that we have to make sure all the 1,500 plus or minus doctors, all of them are absorbed at once, and we have the resources to make sure that they are absorbed at what we have offered as government. And here we're only talking about doctors. We're not touching engineers and estheticians and all that stuff. So as you can see, people at the base are not necessarily very happy financially. There are not necessarily enough jobs for the youth, not necessarily good opportunities and enough opportunities for everybody. But all of a sudden, boom, I want to eat you with tax. Tax on bread, tax on cancer treatment, tax on cars, tax on oil, tax on pad, tax on baby oil, tax... Yeah, that's crazy. So the people are in the street fighting for that. Now, the idea is good. However, the problem is at least many African countries that have tried to introduce a special tax to get more funding from the people, unfortunately, misuse the money. History has told us that many African people, many African countries have tried to generate money from the people, end up using that money for their own purposes. Now, are we saying this is the case with Kenya? We don't know yet. But what we do know is there is corruption in Kenya as well. So if you bring the level of corruption down, if you clamp down on people that bleed the funding from the government and you bring down government waste, wasting money on unnecessary projects, wasting money on unnecessary tenders, you could get enough money to start paying the debt that Kenya need to pay without having the people in the street, the everyday Joe, John, Patrick, paying a special tax every time they go buy bread. Or you can avoid Josine, Jocelyn, Judith from paying tax every time they go get a period pad. So we have a beautiful country here, Kenya, lovely people, wonderful space. However, people are in the streets and it shows you the power of the people. They're not happy. Look, government can be as powerful as they like. They're just a very limited number of human beings. They cannot necessarily control millions of people when they want something specific. People have come down the street wanting to go to parliament and they've been stopped by the police. And there have been reports of people being taken away, disappearing. This type of situations, unfortunately, happens quite a lot in many African countries, where people come in the street asking for something that's meaningful. But unfortunately, the government will send the secret police or the police dressed in civilian clothes to take those people away and make them disappear. And unfortunately, some of them disappear for good. Now, watchdog, the human rights, have accused authorities of abducting protesters in violation of the law. This is not me saying, they are saying. And the Kenyan Human Rights Commission said abduction had mostly occurred at night and were conducted by police officers in civilian clothes and unmarked cars. So this is the problem, fellas, in Africa. Most of the times, people will come in the street claiming something absolutely correct. Like, if they bring the tax down, the police officer will also profit because he won't have to pay those taxes. Even though he's busy working for the government, trying to arrest the civilian men working in the street, trying to arrest the civilian men that's protesting, he doesn't understand that the civilian man is marching for his right. And unfortunately, in many situations, many cases in Africa, when protesters have good points and they go to the streets claiming good things, 
They get abducted and they disappear. What does William Ruto say? William Ruto has made an adjustment. So they have promised to review some of the taxations, which are completely absurd. William Ruto has acknowledged the protests and promised he will hold a talk to address the concern of the youth who are at the forefront of the demonstration. I am very proud of our young people. They have stepped forward tribeless. They have stepped forward peaceful. And I want to tell them we are going to engage them. We are going to have a conversation so that together we can build a greater nation. So what's very interesting to note here is many young men, young people, young women came to the street. They are the leading force of this protest. So tax on bread, tax on cancer treatment, tax on food, tax on cooking oil, tax on diapers, digital tax, tax on m -Pesa, tax on your solar system, tax on your motor vehicle. People have just said enough. We all think it's about time to resolve issues of the people of Africa. And in this case, people of Kenya, they need jobs and opportunities not to be taxed for nothing. I mean, being taxed is good if it's for the good of the people. As far as we know, as per the history we have, every time African people have been taxed by government, they have almost never used it for the benefit of the Africans. If they have, it's never been 100% of the money. We know that. So even though we firmly believe in tax, we also believe in job creation first. Give me an opportunity first. Then maybe you can ask me for money. You need to feed the cow before you milk the cow. Does that make sense? Of course. You cannot try to milk a cow that is not fed. What kind of milk do you expect to get out of a cow that is not fed? Absolutely nothing. Let me know how you feel about this. If you have Kenyans here, we'd like to know what's happening on the ground. Give us some insight. Are we moving to the right direction? God bless.